burn within us. But even with burning hearts, it still wasn't enough for them to recognize who Jesus Christ was right in front of them. I think it's so crazy because I'm married to an Italian. And you got to wonder what Jesus is doing when he's walking down the road. As he's walking down the road, he's wearing these robes. And he's probably got his hands in his pockets, you know, and he's going down like that. Now, if it was Cindy, she'd be going like this, you know, <laughs> explaining the whole thing. And these hands with these great big holes would be flying around out there. <laughs> and they'd say, this guy has holes in his hands. <laughs> you know, but, so you got to wonder whether, even if he's talking with his hands, they're still not seeing it. They're still not realizing who he is. And then finally, as evening begins to fall, they've come seven miles. The, they're specific on the distance. It's a good biblical number, seven miles. Their journey is complete. Those of you with me in Revelation know what that means. Their journey is over. They've come to their destination, and they're getting ready to go in the house, and Jesus is going to walk away. It says he's just going to keep on going. And they are, it is nighttime. The sun is falling down. Darkness is coming. And Jesus is going to leave them, and they're still in their darkness. And here's the turning point in the story. As they enter into their home, they insist, Jesus, you've got to come in with us. You've got to come with us. He said, okay. I think the crucial point there is so much of what happens in Luke is people don't fully realize who Jesus is until they invite him into their home. That's a good point for us. You can come to church. You can hear the scriptures expounded. You can listen to a sermon. But until you go home and you finally break down and invite Jesus Christ into your house, Sometimes you're going to miss who he is. Well, they invited him in. And he sits down and he breaks bread with them. And who knows, maybe it's in grabbing that piece of bread and breaking it, and they finally see the, the daylight coming through his hands. But it says, and they finally saw. And they believed. And they knew. And they knew there that in an instant that those hopes that they had were so small. Here's the fascinating thing. They were so thrilled at seeing the risen Lord. They had a personal experience with the risen Jesus Christ. Changed their lives forever. They just come seven miles walking. They drop everything. Don't even finish the meal. It says Jesus vanished. And what do they do? Seven miles back to Jerusalem. They've got to get back with their brothers and sisters and share the truth of the risen Lord with their brothers and sisters in the context of the church. There's another good message there for all of us, that when you finally see and come and have a personal experience with the risen Jesus Christ, a good thing to do is to drop everything and run back to the brothers and sisters and share that and encourage them and build them up and light them on fire with that knowledge because these are disciples. They had the word. They had watched everything Jesus had done, but they didn't get it. They thought he was a good teacher. How many people come to church? How many people come to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ? And they don't get it. Because they haven't sat in the presence of the risen Lord personally and come to understand that he's so much more than they could ever ask or imagine. There's another piece of this that's so wonderful, and that is the story is set up that it's just like a worship service. When you come in, we gather together. We come into the presence of Jesus Christ, and maybe we're not fully aware of who he is or what he's about, we hear the sermon, we hear the lessons, just like Jesus explained to the disciples. And then finally, we sit down together around the Lord's table, table, and we break bread. And we're given an opportunity in the sacrament to come into the presence of the risen Lord. Can we do that and really come into his presence? Can we let our minds expand so that he's no longer just a great teacher, but he's the Lord of life? Can we trust that he's taking care of death? 
He's taken care of all our garbage and all our lying and crap and all the bad things that we've ever done. Can we trust in that? He's standing right there. And he's saying, oh, you foolish disciples, can't you trust in what's in the scriptures? That's the call today. Easter happened two weeks ago. Easter happened 2,000 years ago. doesn't matter. The question is, have you allowed Easter to happen for you? Have you come to the empty tomb and stood in the presence of the risen Lord and allowed him to change your heart and your life? That's the real question, and it's not too late. Amen.